Hey everybody, KMO here, and I want to read a couple pieces of feedback from a recent video. This was uh, in response to peak oil bullshit part five. Aegon Aram wrote, peak oil alone might not cause an immediate collapse, but the wars over oil might cause one. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, did, uh, did World War II result in the collapse of uh, the societies of Europe? Well, I'd say yeah for a time. They rebuilt. I think uh, when people talk about collapse, they're, for the most part, I think, not thinking about a temporary sort of collapse, which, you know, World War II was utterly devastating to the infrastructure, to the people, to the patterns of commerce uh, of the European continent. And yet, once hostility stopped, we were able to rebuild. Now, you might say it's because we had ample access to uh, energy and material reserves, which is true. But uh, for the most part, I think, the word collapse, it has connotations which are not necessarily part of its actual definition, but uh, I think that the, a good way to think of collapse is as a reduction in complexity to something which is more robust, stable, and sustainable than what had come before. And Apjews wrote, I don't instantly buy that we have to bring down our standards of living. I mean, it would be good if we did regardless, but I don't think we are forced to. Thing is, renewable hydrogen is now cheaper than gasoline. But as long as oil is plentiful, nobody is in a hurry. And another thing is that once there are hydrogen vehicles in large numbers, the cost of electrolyzers that are needed in the production will drop in cost so that hydrogen will actually beat even the cheapest natural gas. The 1880s style scarcity scares have even less relevancy now because technology is much more nimble compared to natural resources. That's my take. So I know you know, from having spent so long in the peak oil community, what the uh, standard peak oil response to that is. And it's, it's actually a, it's a pretty good point. Uh, hydrogen itself is, it is the most common element in the entire universe, as far as we know. And there's plenty of it in our local community. I mean, the sun, the star up in the sky, that huge thing up there, which, uh, you know, accounts for most of the mass of this solar system, is composed primarily of hydrogen. But the thing is, hydrogen uh, readily combines with other elements to, to make things like water, you know, H2O, and uh, other organic compounds. So there aren't just reserves of it lying around. In fact, at room temperature, it is uh, an odorless, colorless gas. It's not particularly dense. And, um, you know, there, there's just not reserves of compressed or liquefied, liquefied hydrogen or even, you know, gas hydrogen that we can just stick a straw into and, and suck it up and, you know, transport it around and use it in the way that we use hydrocarbons. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. There is plenty of hydrogen to be found, and we do use it in industrial processes, but where does it come from? Well, if you look it up on uh, Wikipedia, you'll see that uh, it mostly comes from a process called steam reforming of natural gas. And honestly, I haven't researched it. I can't tell you a whole lot about that. But uh, that process it is a byproduct, you might say, of uh, natural gas, that there's not going to be a hydrogen supply which outstrips the natural gas supply. You can also, though, get it from water. You can break water, but that is a more energy intensive process. But the most important thing to consider here is that hydrogen itself is not a source of energy, since we have to use energy to get it. You know, the same is true of petroleum. We have to use energy to put up the drilling rigs and to you know put all put in place all of the infrastructure that it requires to store and transport and process and basically utilize the hydrocarbons that we get out of the ground. Uh, the same is true of hydrogen, except there's not that concentrated pool of it under the ground. We have to get it, we have to you know break down water, we have to engage in other industrial processes to get it. And so we can't power that, those processes with hydrogen. Those processes have to be powered with something else, most likely hydrocarbons, which is to say gasoline and diesel fuel. You can't even really call it a green energy source unless, of course, you are getting your hydrogen from a process that is powered by, say, hydroelectric or, uh, you know, solar or wind. But solar and wind are, you know, they don't, they don't produce electricity reliably enough to really use it as a power source. You know, not as your primary power source anyway. And I think one... <laughs> you know, real nail in the coffin of uh, the idea that we're going to transition to a hydrogen economy is just to go online and search for government documents about the so-called transition 
to the hydrogen economy. You will find a glut of them. Lots and lots of people were talking about it back during the Bush two years. Uh, George W. Bush and his administration, they basically put the kibosh on some new fuel efficiency standards, new, you know, back in the 90s, that um, the Clinton administration had ushered in. And they basically said, well, we're not going to worry about gasoline efficiency because we're moving over to a hydrogen economy anyway. And, you know, the Bush administration, in order to back up that statement, which was really just a giveaway to the oil company saying, look, we don't really have to, you know, conserve fossil fuels. You know, we're not going to worry about oil efficiency. We're not going to worry about fuel efficiency in automobiles because, you know, we're moving to hydrogen pretty soon. But you'll notice that uh, if you start looking, those reports end as soon as the Bush administration ends. The Obama administration in eight years didn't really take that up. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, the current guy in the White House and his people aren't particularly interested in transitioning to a hydrogen economy. So that whole project really was smoke and mirrors to begin with. But we've even given up, you know, the pretense of pursuing it. So sure, there are hydrogen vehicles around. You can use hydrogen, you know, you can just burn it in your gas tank or you can make hydrogen fuel cells, which is a more efficient way to do it. But, you know, just citing the current price of hydrogen doesn't get you to the point of, oh, it is abundant enough. And if we stop using it or if in addition to the things that we use it for now, you know, various sort of esoteric industrial processes and in creating uh, fertilizers for agriculture, you know, if we increase the demand to not only supply those needs, but also to replace gasoline, well, the price isn't going to stay where it is now. And there is nothing that I've seen to indicate that there is the industrial capacity to create enough hydrogen, you know, to free it from water and the other organic compounds in which it's bound up here on Earth to, uh, you know, to get enough of it to replace petroleum. I just see no indication whatsoever that as a civilization or even as individual societies within the global civilization that anybody is really moving us in that direction. What's more, hydrogen is, is corrosive. It embrittles metal. So it, right now, hydrogen is mostly used pretty close to the place where it is created you know, or liberated uh, because it is very difficult to store and difficult to transport because of the effects that it has on metal. So I think this notion that we are going to transition from powering industrial civilization uh, on hydrocarbons to hydrogen, it's just there is no momentum that I can see to really indicate that that is a viable or realistic ambition or hope. So I don't know how the future is going to play out, but I would be very, very surprised if we did transition to a hydrogen economy. I would be more surprised by that than I would be uh, to have you know, commercially viable nuclear fusion reactors in the next 10 to 15 years. I think that would be less, as a, less of a surprise than our wholesale transition away from petroleum to hydrogen as, you know, a portable fuel source or source of power. It, it, I just don't see any movement in that direction, certainly not enough to justify, you know, the sort of sanguine attitude that you've expressed here. That's my two cents. Again, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know how things are going to go. But uh, hydrogen economy seems implausible. All right, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you again tomorrow.